All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, I announced in seventh period, six, this is what period, sixth period? Um, I am not here on Thursday, so you do not have a test on this content, but we are always thinking big picture, aren't we, people? And this test is on your AP exam, so we need to make sure that we are focusing on the goal. So we are working through, so you do not have a test on this content, but we are going to go through the specifics and today is a real real day of comparative government because we are literally going to write out all of our countries and then we're gonna compare them here we go okay so we are talking executive systems because pretty much every government in the world has three how many branches of government three okay so the first branch we are looking at is the executive now before you start blindly copying, we talked about there's two different ways essentially to style your executive system. And what are the two ways that you can style your executive system? What are the two most popular ways? We literally covered this yesterday. It's not a trick question. Kate. The presidential system and the parliamentary. There you go. So the presidential and the parliamentary systems are the two most likely ways that executive systems are going to be designed. Please listen. All of the countries that we are studying in AP Comparative fall under these two systems that make sense. But this is where we get into the comparative. Hello, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. In every single country, they do it just a little bit differently. Can we agree? You are going to have to, this is big picture, not just right now. You are going to have to memorize details of each country. Like, the, real, the president's name in China is called the Supreme Communist Leader. Like, you just have to know that. I'm gonna officially teach you those kinds of things today. Tomorrow I'm teaching you the legislative branch and you need to memorize, okay? All the different countries, what they call their legislative branch, because you just can't call it legislative. Like the Duomo is going to be for uh, Russia. The Politburo is China. These are the things you're gonna have to memorize and be able to compare. Oh my God, isn't this exciting? Let's do the damn thing. Here we go. First country out. Let's go to China. They have a president, which means they're part of what system? President. Oh, my God. You guys have figured it out. So under president, I would circle it or something. So you know China has a president. Okay? Under China, you need to know. I'm not worried about you knowing the current leaders. That's not something I'm stressing about. We'll get to the current leaders as we go. So for China, you do need to know they are known as a president. You need to know they are called the commander in chief. By the way, when we say commander in chief, and we're going to use that title a lot, what does that actually refer to? I have not explicitly taught this to you. What does it explicitly mean, Adam? Uh, does it mean that they like, they are like, no, it's not. It is. They're in charge of the military. They're in charge of the military. Okay? If you did not know that, you need to write that down somewhere. Commander in chief means they maintain the control over the military. Okay? So in China, the president of China is in charge is the commander in chief, which means they're in charge of the military. You need to know they are a chair of the military commission. So what's the difference? The president is. The president is. They are the chair of the military commission. I thought you just said the president was the commander in chief. It is. But he's also a chair yeah. of the military. Well, you let me get there, my love. <laughs> it's also right here. Okay. They're also the chair of the military commission, which means they get to drive the conversation of military spending. Here in the United States, who drives the conversation of military spending? Guys, I taught you this. Who does tax the, who spends taxes? Congress, Congress. So here, for the military, who drives it in China? President. The president. The president gets to focus on where they're spending their money, okay? You need to know that they have the name of the General Secretary of the Communist Party. That's a big thing that makes China very unique. Iran, they call him the Supreme Leader. These are unique titles you just have to know. So, 
the executive branch in China. The president serves as the commander in chief. They're the chair of the military commission, which means they get to decide for spending and stuff like that. Um, they have the nickname of the secretary of the communist party. You need to know, ladies and gentlemen, that the president nominates a premier, and I would underline premier, that's a unique term in China, as head of government. So the premier is essentially the what? It's like the prime minister of a semi-presidential system. The head of state looks in, uh, the head of government looks inward where the head of state looks outward. outward. So in China, they have a head of government who is the premier. So underneath your little blurbs about China, I would put most important. These are things that non-negotiable you have to know about the executive branch of China. You need to know, General Secretary of the Communist Party. And you need to know, the Premier is the head of, gov uh, head of government, while the president, and the president is the head of state. This is China? Yep. This is all China. When you say head of government looks in? Yes, head of government looks in while head of state looks outward. No, the president here in the United States is head of state and head of government. Wait, so Biden is in charge of both what is happening inside the United States and what is going on outside. However, the prime minister of England is looking in while the king of England is supposed to be looking out. But they don't have any real power. Okay, so China. Big things you have to know. They are called the General Secretary of the Communist Party. They have a premier who essentially is the prime minister or the, is definitely the head of government, looks in and is dealing with the heavy lifting. Sounds good? Let's go to Iran, ladies and gentlemen. Are we excited we're like actually comparing these countries here? Yeah. This is so exciting. So, okay, Iran, you need to know, they have the nickname of the supreme leader. They have the nickname of the supreme leader. The president? The president has the nickname of a supreme leader. You need to know, and this is where things get weird in Iran. They serve as commander in chief. Okay, however, They only control half of the cabinet. Now, for clarification of a cabinet, what is a cabinet? I taught you this in AP Gov, but I want to make sure we're pulling it through here. What is a cabinet, Lilith? Yeah, it's just advisors. So here in the United States, the president appoints all or half of the advisors or none of the advisors. All. all. All the advisors are selected by the president and you serve at the will of the president. If the president likes you, you get to keep your job. If the president hates you, you get to be rejected. Congress has to approve you, but they don't really tell the president too much what to do. In Iran, half of the cabinet is chosen by the president. Write this down. The other half is by the legislator. Half of the cabinet is chosen by the legislator. Half of it is chosen by the executive. Okay? Because commander-in-chief means he controls the military, but he doesn't control all aspects inside of his country. That's with the cabinet. That's why half of it's being filled by the legislator, so they have power over it. Nah, uh, but there's really not a ton of separation of powers in the modern state of Iran, but they tried. They tried to when it was originally formed. All right, you need to know that they do have term limits. Okay, so underneath China, what should you probably add? 
no term limits because Xi Jinping just extended it till the end of his life. Is that how a president works, by the way? No. no. So under China, I would write no term limits. Iran has term limits. You can do two four-year terms of president. Very uh, exactly the same as the U.S. Okay. Do you understand why we teach government first? And then we go into AP Comparative, because AP uh, US is not of the seven I teach. However, it is something we constantly refer back to. What's up, Andre? Um, so like, Mexico's that, next, by the way. You said that like, every government is decided by other like, foreign places. Like yeah. Foreign places decide where the government is. And how are we saying that China is the presidency when it's really like, because we're not deciding if it's an authoritarian regime or a democratic okay. regime right now. We're looking at the formation of their government, yes. Okay, Mexico is next, and they have a president, so they obviously follow under presidential. Okay, so you need to know that Mexico's president is head of state and head of government. That is the opposite of Iran and China. Can we agree? Okay, this is unique so far in our combination. You will see that the head of state and head of government is a common way, but China and Iran do not have that. Mexico does. So you need to know that they are called the head of government and head of state. You need to know that they are commander in chief. So they control the military. Okay, you need to know that they, the president of Mexico has to approve domestic legislation. Oh my God. So does that mean we have some overlap? Yeah. Yes, we have a little bit of overlap in Mexico between the three branches of government. So in Mexico, the three branches of government, two of them overlap. The executive has a little overlap over the legislative. You will also see this in Nigeria. Okay. You also need to know that they only get to serve one term. So they have term limits and it's one term. Does anyone know why? Why are presidents only allowed to have one term in Mexico? No. Adam. Corruption. Yeah. How long is that term? Does it matter? Huh? Does it matter how long the term is? Uh, I think it's eight years. I think it's significantly longer um, than ours. But they only get one term because they've had a bunch of presidents who have been won their office and then have stayed for like 25 years. Is that how a president functions? No. So in order to avoid this idea of getting reelected over and over again in a sham election that we see like with Putin and in China right now, they just said you can only win one term to try to cut down this election. That's what you mean by corruption? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're trying to block the corruption. Like when you think today, Mexico, do you think solid democracy or corruption? Corruption. Corruption. Okay. So. Mexico. So the unique thing is the legislative and the executive do overlap. You also need to know that they restrict to one term to avoid corruption. Okay? Here we go. Does they have a title? They don't. They're just president. Okay? But they are head of state and head of government, which we did talk about, which makes it unique. All right, here we go. So executive system of Nigeria is your next country because we have six countries we have to look at. No, it's six officially. I keep saying seven, but it's six. Okay. Okay. So Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know Nigeria has both a, is both head of state and head of government. In the United States today, Joe Biden is the head of state and, government. and head of government. Okay, that's not always the case, but in Nigeria it is. Okay, Nigeria, Mexico, and the United States all have the president as head of state and head of government. So in the U.S., like Joe Biden is in both commander in chief. He's the commander in chief. He's got three titles. Joe Biden's in charge of the military. 
He has a council that get to influence him and advisors who get to influence him. No, he's the highest. He's the ep epitome of it. Okay, um, you need to know he is the commander in chief, of course, and you need to know that Nigeria also, the president has to approve of domestic legislation. There are only two presidents that have to approve of domestic legislation, and who are they, Ethan? I literally just taught them to you, Ethan. I know this may not be that exciting, but you need to know it, yeah? What do you got, Lele? Who are the two? Well, Mexico and Nigeria. Mexico and Nigeria both have to have the president. So is there overlap in these two branches? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So that's all you need to know for Nigeria. They have no term limits, okay? They have no term limits in Nigeria, which has proven to be a little controversial. Okay, um, but that is some of the big unique things. So if you are going to compare two presidential systems together, who are uh, two presidential systems together, which ones would you choose that are the most similar, Ty? Uh, Mexico, Mexico and Nigeria are going to be the two similar of the major six that we study. If you are going to pick which one is the most unique of the presidential systems, which one would you say, Andrew? Which one has this, the most unique components? We only have four choices, Andrew. No. Which one is the most unique, Jillian? Iran, Iran, the president of Iran has less power than any other president. The funny thing is, Iran is doing its own thing. Who can raise your hand and tell me why the president of Iran has less power than any other president? Come on, guys. These are the types of comparison questions you were going to see on your test if we were taking a test on it. What do we got? Matthew. It only controls half the cabinet. Remember, one of the powers of the executive is their own cabinet, yes? Okay, these are the types of things. I know this may not be that exciting and rousing. It's not death and destruction, but these are the types of things you need to be thinking about as I'm going and I'm trying to pull you through. Here we go. Prime ministership. So if we're in a prime minister, what type of system are we in, Lucy? Parliamentary. Parliamentary, here we go. First one we're gonna talk about is Russia. It does have a prime minister, but it also has a president because it is semi-presidential. Okay, you need to know that it's immediately unique in comparison to the five others because it has both. You need to know that the prime minister is the head of the government. Okay, so you also need to know he is, he is going to be the commander in chief. So who's in charge of Russia's military right now? The yeah, who's Putin right now? Um, and that's the reason. So whose fault is that the invasion of Ukraine is going poorly? Whose fault is it? It's Putin's fault because he's the commander in charge. What do you got? So this is a little bit of both, and this is what makes the system very complicated. He consolidated power. It's not a great example, huh? It's a consolidation of power. Putin was the prime minister who consolidated power and has made himself all power. Like, he consolidated, he consolidated the power in the two presidents. Yeah. So we'll get into these nuances, but the prime minister, which is where Putin originally started at, is going to be. He consolidates his power, a.k.a. makes himself the only powerful person in Russia, and that's today why we have an authoritarian regime in Russia and not a democratic regime, yes? So we're starting at the beginning of these governments. We're not starting at modern-day current chaos, yes? Meriwether. He doesn't exist anymore. Oh, Mikhail Mushin, he, yeah, he's not around anymore. 
He's gone. Okay, here we go. You need to know that the prime minister, ladies and gentlemen, no, hold up. Putin is the president. This guy is the prime minister. Sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. This guy is the prime minister. I'm not worried about you guys getting caught up in names right now. Is everyone clear? That prime minister of Russia is going to be the person who's head of government. Head of government means they're looking inside or looking outside? Inside. Inside. Head of state looks outside. outside. Okay? So, in Russia, you have a prime minister. They're the head of government. They are called the commander-in-chief. Okay? You also need to know that the prime minister presides over the Duma. The Duma is the legislative branch of Russia. You have to know that. You have to know that. We're going to get into the different aspects of it here in a few minutes. Okay? So the prime minister leads the legislative branch as well, so we see a little bit of overlap from there, but a continuation of this prime, uh, parliamentary system, yes? What do you got for me, Kate? A Duma is the legislative body of Russia. What is the name of our legislative body, Kate? Congress. Congress. Theirs is the Duma. China has the Politburo. What does it mean under certain conditions? Um, like if things are going uh, poorly, or if there's a tie, or something like that, they're the ones who are in charge. Okay. Wait, I have a question. What? Is the president the head of state? Head of state is the president. Remember, they have both a prime minister and a president. Mary Wait, is Putin the president? Putin's president. Because he has consolidated power and has decided everything he wants. Um, yeah. Putin has made things all about him. But technically in Russia, who's supposed to have that power? The prime minister. But Putin has consolidated power. Putin's not a very good example of a president. Can we disagree? Mm -hmm. Did he follow the rules? Um, Is Putin currently following the rules? No. no. So he's obviously not going to follow the foundations of which his government's supposed to be laid out. UK, here we go. So, you'll also notice there's no term limits under Russia, yes? No term. no term limits. You will also notice that there is the head of state is the president. I would also make a note of that under Russia. And I would explicitly write a head of state and um, there's a prime minister and a pre uh, prime minister and a president under Russia just to make sure you know that. Okay, UK is where we're heading next and they have a prime minister. Okay, they have a ha prime minister who is the head of the government. And so UK is parliamentary. Yes. Okay, UK, you have a prime minister who is the leader of the government. The royal family is the state, head of the state. But I would know that the royal family has no authority in, Eng in the UK. Write it down. Because in other countries, the king does have some authority. In the UK, it does not. It's just a title. It's just a title, essentially, and a huge tax benefit. They give you that income, no power. Yes, which is why people are so upset that Harry and Meghan are going to blow this whole thing up. What do you mean? Um, <laughs> they have a huge Netflix show coming out on the 8th that... The royal family is already not particularly popular in, Eng in England, and the fact that they're continually going against it, it's, people are afraid that within our lifetime, the, the royal family may not be, there may not be a royal family in England anymore. They're really expensive. They're really expensive. They get tax benefits. Um, they also require a lot of tax money to support them. And what benefits do they really have? They're a tourist attraction. And that's why they make a lot of revenue for England because of their tourist attraction, but they're not particularly popular in England. In England. What do you got, Nick? How do you get rid of the royal family? Um, well, there's multiple ways. You can behead them, <laughs> which they did in France. You can shoot them, like you did in Russia. Yeah, or you can just say you're no longer and you have to pay your way. <laughs> They would just be like, you're no longer the royal family. You can, you know, you can live here as long as you pay for it. They have plenty of money. Do you think the royal people are Catholic? Yeah, they're super wealthy. Yeah, the queen is like on the top ten wealthiest people. No, they get money from stealing from people. Yeah, all of their wealth comes from stealing from in India 
and other nations and depriving them and destroying their entire cultures and exploiting them for their own benefit. Yeah, they're fine and they should pay their way. Yeah. By the way, as Americans, we should all be saying down with the crown. Because we're Americans and we said down to the crown. I gotta get back on track here, people. Oh, I don't like, know. Do I don't know. Well, you yeah. can't because you're an American and no one gives a crap well, what you think in England. Like, yeah? Like, they would do a like, vote, crazy, crazy which I could talk crazy. about if I get to legislative. Prime ministers of UK, they'll put it to a vote. They voted in the 90s and it was like 10% who, of more who wanted the royal family. Now they're saying it's significantly less. All right. Here we go. So, in UK, you need to know that the monarch has to formally appoint a prime minister. It's ceremony only, though. Do you know how I told you uh, the day before the queen died, her, uh, the queen's last prime minister went up to her? The queen has to ask you to open a government in your name. And the prime minister always responds, yes, I will open a government in your name. And to that, you're officially prime minister. Okay? It's complete ceremony. Nothing actually meaning because who has no power? The royal family. The monarchy has no power. It's literally a symbol of transition of power from the authority to the people. It's a sham, but it's part of the pageantry. Okay, now you need to know the prime minister is from the lar of the majority party. Okay, in the House of Commons, it's the leader. It's the leader of the majority party and of the most powerful party. You need to know the prime minister is selected typically from the House of Commons. There are two houses in Parliament. You have to know this. We're going to get into it when we get to legislation, but if you don't know it, let's talk about it now. There are two houses in Parliament. There's a high house and a low house. What's the name of the high house? Lord. House of Lords. Okay, if you don't know it, you better be writing it down. The House of Lords. How do you become a member of the House of Lords, Parker? How do you become a lord? Oh, come on. If you want to marry a duke... They're born, eh? Oh, shit. Parker, we gotta get you caught up on your fairy tales. Guys, how do you become a lord, Anna? Are you born into it? Yeah, you're born into it. So how do you think you become a lord in parliament? You're born into it. If your dad's a lord, the oldest son becomes a? Lord. Now, up until, I think, 1991, they changed the law. It's no longer the oldest male. It's the oldest child becomes the lord or the lady. Of the, of the house, okay? And they get to go to parliament. They're the upper house. What's the name of the lower house, Pierce? House of Commons. House of Commons. And who do you think are in, is in that house, Pierce? People who are voting. People who are voting. Yes, they do vote for people in that. They're called commoners because it's called the House of? Commons. Yeah, these people with no royalty in their blood, yes? Okay, they get to elect their representatives. So the House of Lords is appointed by first. Hereditary. Yes, it's hereditary. Your House of Commons is voted by election. You need to know these things. It's a non-negotiable. And how do you not know these? Yeah. Don't they talk about this in like your classes? No. Oh, they can pull up within our Congress, like the House of Lords. And the House of Lords, House of Commons. But like, how do your teachers teach you about like the Magna Carta and shit without talking about the creation of the House of Parliament? But that's supposed to be taught in every stupid oh, social yeah. studies class. Huh? That's what HIV is supposed to be The reason why we have a high house and a low house is because of why. Because they're not useful. Yes, yeah. 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 so why yeah. haven't you learned this in every class, <laughs> social studies class? It's just like magic not that pulls between two countries. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm impressed that you know the date. That's all I like. Doesn't it make you sad that you don't know this? No. I can't. You people, you people are behind. It's horrifying how little you people know collectively. Okay, 
Russia. You have a high house and a low house. House of Lords is by birth. House of Commons is by election. You need to know that the Prime Minister the majority of the time comes from the House of Commons. Okay, they're coming through the House of Commons. Huh? Promise? Yeah. It comes from the House of Commons. Why do they want it? Why do we want the Prime Minister from the House of Commons versus the Lords? Why? Lily? Kate, what do you got? Sure, but come on. There's a justification here. Anna? They're voted on by the people. Okay, that's not a bad thing. Yes, they are appointed by the people, but more importantly, what, Nick? I was going to say that they have the right to have the decision go through, but even if they haven't. Okay, fine. Guys, hi. The opposite is the king or queen of England, who has obviously got that position because they're the most qualified, or they were born into the weird role. They're born into it, so they want to oppose it by someone the people chose, yes? A strong candidate that gets a lot of respect from the people because the people have chosen those people. That's why they have typically two. Every once in a while, you do get a lord as a prime minister, but that's kind of like a weird thing. Okay, so you need to know the prime minister sets foreign policy. They set it. They don't do it because who's technically in charge of foreign policy? President, what the hell are you talking? We're talking about England. Who is it, Aiden? Who technically gets to drive foreign policy? The king. Okay, but the king can has to get the direction from the prime minister because the royals cannot just do whatever the hell they want. They have to have the permission of the prime minister because they are allowed to exist because the prime minister allows them to exist. That's the balance of it. Okay. You also need to know that they are the de facto, de facto, underline it, commander in chief. That's their title. That's their title. They are the de facto. What does de facto mean? Oh shit, people. We gotta work on this SAT vocab. De facto means in the end of it all. De facto means in the end of it all. So who is the real commander in chief in this system? The monarch is, because whoever is in charge of the state is in charge of the military. Well, I thought you just said that. The I know, but they're de facto, which is why we underline de facto. Because in England, the kings don't really have any power. Can we agree? So in presentation style, who is in charge? In fancy outfits, who's in charge? The prime minister? Or the royal? The royal, because who walks around in the stupid little military outfits all the damn time? The royals, right? How many times have you seen the queen in her all red outfit, or Charles panders around his little military outfits and all that stuff? Okay, it's because they are the leaders of the military, but are they? No. no, they are not. The de facto leader, the actual person in charge is the? Prime Minister. Yes, that's why it's called de facto, which is why we underline de facto. Because if the Prime Minister was just in charge of the military, we would just call them Commander in Chief. But de facto means there's a little bit of pageantry and a little bit of bullshit. Yes? Okay, that's why they all walk around in little military uniforms. Okay? They're not really leaders of the military. They just like saying they are. And they look cute in the little outfits. Luke. No, because then, how, dude, you, do, can the royals run for a House of Commons? <laughs> no, dude, it's the only thing regular people have. The regular people would never vote for a royal person. So the privileges you get as a royal person is something we fundamentally can't understand. What? If the Prime Minister sets foreign policy, who are they for? Who are they? What? 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 Yes. Sets foreign policy, but they're not technically ahead of foreign policy, because who's technically ahead of foreign policy? The king is. But the king has no power, so who actually gets to tell the king what to tell other countries? Mm -hmm. The prime minister. Do you see how much pageantry there is in this king being involved? Hello? Mm -hmm. They get to pretend they're doing things, but who's actually doing all the work? Prime, prime minister. So they're like pandering around like, oh my god, look at me, look so at me. No, the Prime Minister's job sucks right now because the economy in England's trash. Yeah. Okay. 
Here we go. Removal of executive. The UK is a no confidence. Nigeria, Mexico, and Russia is impeachment. Iran, it would never happen. UK is what? Uh, UK is uh, no confidence, which we just talked about. We'll pick this up tomorrow. Have a good day. <clears throat> yeah, because Paula was wandering around, doing all the things Paula does. That was fun. I just have to go cover a clock. Bye, my darling. Bye, sweetie. Isn't this stuff interesting, people? Yeah.